Hello and welcome to Lutherans Alive. My name is Gregory Held, and this is the program that brings you the story of Lutheran Christians and their ministries in southwestern Pennsylvania. With us today is Pastor Roger Steiner, pastor of the Penn Zions Cooperative Ministry in the western Westmoreland County area. Roger, welcome. Thank you. Great to have you with us today. Good to be here. Thanks for coming in and uh, for sharing a bit about the life in the Penn Zions uh, ministry and in uh, Westmoreland County. And we wanted to start just uh, maybe by introducing uh, the, the cooperative ministry and the area. How would you characterize for someone who's never been in the area, how would you de describe uh, that portion of Westmoreland County and the Penn Zions Cooperative? Well, Penn Zions Lutheran Parish uh, became a official one congregation about three years ago, just before I got there. Okay. Uh, my predecessor, Pastor Bob Mark, served there for 37 years, and they had mm. they've had this cooperative work uh, all those years. But just recently, when in the process of his retiring, form, formed that a little bit more and shaped that a little bit more. And so they, all, they do work now as one congregation with one full-time pastor. Uh, so they've worked together all these years. I came on board a couple of years ago mm -hmm. and uh, have really enjoyed working with them. Uh, there are some things that we continue to work on as far as bringing people together and, and uh, doing the work together that we want to do. But it's a, a good congregation to work with. Yeah. Some people might, might not be real excited about uh, being in a joint situation where there are two sites, right? Two church Correct. buildings, two congregations, uh, congregational groups that are functioning as one uh, congregation now. Mm -hmm. uh, this isn't your first experience with uh, two-point ministries, is it? No, it isn't. Uh, in fact, my seminary internship experience was at, uh, in Bedford with Pastor Dick Tome and Pastor Ray Short. I know Pastor Short is still there serving Trinity in Bedford, but we had six congregations that we served. Six. Six. And that was a great experience because I had to preach every week, and um, Pastor Tome showed me how to organize my reports so that that accountability could take place in a parish that size. Mm. Because you could say, well, I've been down at these other congregations and not be at the others. And the others would say, where are you? So the accountability piece became very important. Mm. And uh, as a result of that, then I, my first call was at, um, in Somerset County at the New Centerville Lutheran Parish. Where I had served three congregations. Okay. So it, I do have that experience in the background. It's really kind of neat because each congregation is its own personality. And I find that the same thing here at Penn Zion's Lutheran Church in Harrison City. They each have their own personality. Mm -hmm. um, probably the best way to describe Penn is it's a, a small town, church feel. Uh, People know each other, they're related to each other, and uh, just work that way as a small congregation in a community. Zion's out on Route 130 there near Harrison City. Um, it's in the middle of a, a growing uh, suburban area. It's got that feel to it. There's a lot of new homes that are out there and uh, large neighborhoods. Uh, fairly well-to-do people in that area. So it's a, a different setting out in Harrison City mm -hmm. and uh, it provides a preaching challenge on Sunday mornings with each one having a different personality because uh, it might be the same sermon but it comes out in a different way. And in, in addition to the Sunday worship experience, there's the administrative experience of uh, working with the church council, um, mm -hmm. making sure that all of the uh, as you were saying, accountability gets gets handled for uh, the work in in both buildings and uh, the administration that goes on there. Mm -hmm. um, how how is it working with um, lay people um, in those leadership uh, roles, responsibilities, in terms of making sure that all of the caring and uh, the ministry of the, the the congregation gets carried out. Well, the way they have it set up is there are representatives from each congregation that sit on the parish council. 
and it's always kind of been that way. Uh, that way both congregations have voice in the administrative matters of the congregations. They're still kind of separate as far as congregational meetings are concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, that Penn still has its own books and things that they do with their congregation, and then Zion's the same way. Uh, but overall, the, the teamwork is to provide that ministry, and, and uh, now that they've more formalized that just recently, it's like, how do we continue to build on that? Uh, what are some things that we can work on more directly together, building relationships with one another as congregations, uh, Christian education, establishing that a little bit further because Sunday mornings I'm not available mm. going to two different congregations. I cannot be actively involved in that type of programs. And are there um, committee structures in place in both congregations as well where there might be a property committee or a worship and music committee or are those things pretty much kind of folded into the other, uh, the, the council or everything administrative group, I guess? Yeah, everything pretty much flows in through the church council. Now, as time moves on and uh, things develop in the congregation, there will probably be the opportunity for the building of ministry teams. I, I've always been the kind of person, I don't like the term committees. I think okay. it sounds too corporate-like. So I... Uh, I think ministry teams uplift the, the gifts and the abilities of people, and, and so there's some of that language change in there, too, mm -hmm. to help people think in that way, is that we are a ministry, not a corporate committee trying mm -hmm. to get something done. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure some of that adjustment in terms of the way we think and the way we operate takes place when a pastoral change uh, comes about. You mentioned Pastor Mark's um, a good long tenure mm -hmm. um, in those situations, and that provides a, a time for people to get comfortable or at least get used to doing things a certain way. Um, how much of a challenge is it for a new pastor um, to work with the established uh, situation or to uh, think about and, and work with the people in the congregation in terms of um, making the transition a smooth one? I think what's important is just initially to get to know the people as best as possible. And it's, it's difficult to make every member home visits, and you know a lot of people in congregations want that. But I think there is a sense that uh, there is something new that's going to happen. I think there's some expectations. Uh, but on my part as a pastor, to, to move about slowly in that, it... Um, it's really getting to know the people, where they are, what their values are, and and then uh, just getting to know them. So my first couple of years have really been concentrating on learning people's names. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's an important thing. And you know, one of the things I learned with Pastor Myers over at Christ Murray's Bill was to uh, to begin naming the names of the people as I hand out communion. So that helps me on a weekly basis now remember their names and I think the sense that if of loving them I think that's important that if they they know that they are loved and um, you know in that loving situation even if we disagree on different things we can still sit down and talk those differences out and mm -hmm. and in that process then set up the opportunity for change yeah. Uh, we do have to take a short break. I'd um, okay. like to talk about some of the specific initiatives that um, are going on um, in the cooperative ministry when we come back. Okay. Great. We'll be right back.